Hello and welcome to Senior Publications Ask the Expert interview where we talk about all things involving healthcare, finances, free resources, and other important senior related topics. I'm David Moss, publisher of Senior Life Publication, which is a free resource you can find throughout Tampa Bay. And I'm Stephen Halstead, the Senior Sales Manager for Senior Life Publications. If you haven't already picked up a copy of our magazine or looked at it online, please do so. It is a free publication that can be mailed to your home if you'd like to have a subscription. You just need to get a hold of David. You can fill out a form to actually uh, have that sent to you as well. Uh, some of our distribution places are like uh, libraries, like the Largo Library, as well as some of the village inns, actually all the village inns in uh, Pinellas County right now, as well as senior centers and other places. But guess what? Today we have a very special guest, and I am excited to introduce Sue Osborne. Sue Glad is, oh yeah, of course it is. I mean, hello, it's Friday, right? <laughs> Yay. So Sue is on the board for the uh, Largo Central Park Performing Arts Center Foundation. We are here at the lovely Central Park Performing Arts Center, but I'd like Sue to tell us a little bit about what the, the, the foundation does, their mission, and what kind of work they do for the community. Our foundation started over 25 years ago when actually it was called Partners in Progress, and we raised all of the money to build the Largo Central Park, which is the jewel in the heart of Pinellas County. And after that was open, the, actually during the grand opening ceremony, we dug the hole to start construction on this building, which we also helped raise the funds for. So that was funded by uh, grants and contributions from uh, states. And our foundation actually raised about 465,000 contributing to the million, several million dollars of this building. So about a year after it was open, we figured out that no arts organization can support itself without having some kind of private funding because right. it just doesn't happen. And so those of us who care so much and are so passionate about the arts for all ages decided that we would continue our foundation. And now we've become the Central Park Performing Arts Foundation, which supports the functions of this building. And one of our primary things is keeping the ticket prices more uh, affordable for everybody because you know, you can't, if you don't have $90 a seat, you can't go to some venues. And this was actually voted the best place to see live entertainment for several years by different publications in the county. So one of the reasons I think that happens is because people can actually afford to go. It's important. That's a huge part of it, especially when you're talking about families. So you're not talking about just mom and dad, but the kids, but then you also have the grandparents on the other fixed, side. Yeah, right? fixed income people. And, and a lot of people really enjoy the variety of entertainment that's here. Um, they have a, a theater group, eight, eight o'clock theater, which is our standard, you know, in-house theater company has been doing great shows for many, many years. They have one coming up in March. Yes. And we fund a whole series for the specifically designed for children, which is normally without COVID problems, six to eight shows a year that are completely designed for children. It teaches them theater etiquette. They have moral and educational messages in these shows and they're extremely affordable. So a family of four pack is like 20 bucks. Right. So a family of four can come and see a, a live theater show for $20. We also give uh, free tickets to Title I schools and they come as a field trip. Uh, that's all funded by the foundation. And our summer theater camps, of course, we've put about 600 kids through theater camp that would mm -hmm. never have been able to attend. And a lot of those kids grow up to be absolutely. patrons right? patrons yeah. of the theater. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's really, I love how you really emphasize that, Sue, is that it, you have something for everybody. Mm -hmm. So even absolutely. for kids growing up and really appreciating the arts, uh, it seems like you're covering pretty much the whole spectrum. But mm -hmm. what's one thing that you really want to emphasize for our viewers and our readers of the senior market that you really want to kind of let everyone know about? Well, unlike a lot of theaters around the county and around the country at this point, this center has been open for several months with social distancing and they've revamped how the seating is arranged. Instead of stadium seating or theater seating, it is now individual tables of four and they're all six feet apart and you can come in and wear a mask and you, if you have a beverage, you can take your mask off while you're drinking or eating something and then you put it back on again and you can still see a show for a reasonable price. 
And I, that's huge because I remember I'm also on the board of the foundation, but uh, we talked about uh, with the center trying to figure out how do we do this? We're not gonna make the money. The center is not gonna make the money they normally would when they do a show or if a concert comes through. And a lot of these people have canceled, right? Because of traveling in the pandemic. But the whole idea was we they finally came to the decision that having something done safely that people can still go to was more important than not doing anything because it promotes you know, self-awareness and getting out and, and getting some entertainment and some mental awareness as well. And so it has been huge. They, the, this is this chamber is typically full of, of like uh, how many seats? Is 333. It? But, you know, they've went down to six feet tables, like you said, six feet apart with four to a table. So it's not about the money as much as it is about supporting those in the community who really still want to try to do something safely. And there, there was not a lot of that happening in Pinellas County. It's a lot easier to do nothing, actually, yes. than to reinvent right. how you show a live performance. Right. So there's a lot of things that are going on, and I think it's really important. I mean, people use the park all the time, the actual Central Park. And I think that it is the jewel of the, of the county, but I think a lot of people aren't aware that it's here or what happens in the building. True, but, so and, and, but our lighting should help because the foundation mm -hmm. just funded an exterior lighting program. So now when the people are in the park, they're going to see the building all lit up. And so wonderful. that, that yeah, should help. I already help. noticed that when I was walking in this mm -hmm. morning. It <laughs> like looks like a theater now works. instead of just, oh, well, there's a building over there. And if, it, if there's nothing going on and it's dark, then they just think it's a government building or it's, you know, whatever. Some people just but, don't know. Correct. And it's not because they don't care. It's, great it's idea. just they don't know. See, I wouldn't have thought of that until you brought it up because you really want to have that sort of out there, sort mm -hmm. of intimate, you know, parody yeah. that you can say, hey, we're here. We're ready to have you come in and enjoy all the shows that we provide. And the center provides so much, uh, the Performing Arts Center, I should call it. I'm used to calling it the center, but the Performing Arts Center provides space for uh, weddings and rehearsal dinners and meetings. You, you can have I a think. meeting, you can have it's a lot of space. Uh, I, yeah, you can rent the room. So it's not just the theater itself. And There's, we just built the portico and uh, extended portico. the outside venue. So there is outside space where they have concerts, outdoor concerts, yeah. which are generally free. So there, are, there is free entertainment outside. I love that it's mid county too. So it's right not too far. It's not, you know, way down here or way up there, you know, with Pinellas County, our residents don't like to travel very long or very far to go to these different kind of venues. But because it's easy access, it's easy to get to, it's right in mid county. It's something for everybody. So you can also go online to largoarts.com to check out the website for the center of all the sh upcoming shows they've got coming. Uh, I am excited about The Highwayman coming up next weekend, which is that Waylon Jennings, Willie Nelson tribute band. Uh, there's also uh, Yesterday, which is a Beatles tribute, which I'm and coming in March that I think is gonna be, I think it's one of the only tribute Beatles tribute bands that Paul McCartney actually endorses. Oh, really? Yeah, so that's exciting. Yeah, and then yeah. Amic 8 O'Clock Theater does have a performance of a show coming up in March called Disenchanted. Um, so check out their website. You can also uh, come to the box office here at the center or you can call the box office at 727-587-6797. Sorry about that, I had to read it. But uh, there's a lot going on, so check it out. You can also become a member of our foundation if you wanna give back to the arts. You know, one of the ways we raise the money is through our memberships and fundraising. Our biggest fundraiser recently has been the Ferris Wheel, which was here in the park over the Christmas holiday. Yeah. And, and most people, especially people live in Largo, but also Pinellas County, uh, Clearwater and St. Pete, come to see the lights, the oh, Christmas the lights light in the amazing. park. And this year, yeah, and this year because of the new lighting on the building, it blended in really, really well. The building wasn't just dark and you didn't notice it because you know you were just looking at the Christmas lights. The building was lit up as well and it really blended in it. Just makes a, a wonderful experience for the family to come and, and hang out, so awesome. Well, it seems like there's so many different things at Largo and everything that's going on here at the Arts Center that you're evolving and doing and being compliant with what's going on. Absolutely. With everything that's happening, not only with the city of Largo, but all the other different things that you have to make sure that everyone is safe and mm -hmm. that they can come here and still have a good time. And that's something that we can still make sure that everybody knows about. Well, Sue, thank you so much for you're being here. You're most welcome. Thanks for having me. And I want everybody to check out LargoArts.com. 
if you have any other questions. And our website. A website, and yeah, the foundation, the Central Park Performing Arts Foundation also has a website. Well, thank you so much, Sue. I hope you enjoyed this video and we're looking forward to providing you and our seniors with more information that matters to you most. Thank you for joining us. And if you'd like a free monthly subscription to Senior Life Publications mailed to you, please contact me. My name is David again. I'm the publisher of Senior Life Publications. My phone number is 727-430-5180 or you can email me at dmoss, D-M-O-S-S, -S, at seniorlifepublications.com. Have a good day. Thank you for joining us.